Baylor has already landed its marquee quarterback transfer and nine total players out of the portal, but it's not done yet. This is Locked On Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, Finally, Friday, the end of the work week. Drake Toll alongside Scotty Swingler. I'm from Sports Illustrated's Inside the Bears. Scotty is, Scotty, when people, when people introduce you, you know, big please bear with me guy. I see a lot of, like, you're just a Bears Illustrated. I see you're connected with a lot of those guys. What, what do you say when you introduce yourself? The former please bear with me guy. I don't, because I don't even do that show anymore and haven't for two years. You know, I'm not sure. Just the pigskin preacher. Oh, the pigskin preacher. Well, thank that? you. Thank you specifically and everyone else for making Locked On Baylor their first listen every single day. Saw your Robertson on the show yesterday. That d- like he is look okay, a great quarterback. You watch his film like oh you know within the last week it's been okay. Saw your Robertson might come to Baylor and then you talk to the kid and dude he is whatever it is he's got it. Dude, lights out interview yesterday, by the way. Really enjoyed that um, and appreciated that. Were you the first to get him as far as Baylor people go? No, I think he had had like, uh, he did probably four or five interviews yesterday, uh, but I promised him that ours would be the most fun laid back and that I would be the only one to ask him what his favorite food is. So I'm I'm pumped because he and I have the same favorite movie, which is Gladiator. That made yeah. me feel that made me feel really good about my life. But you're right, Drake. I mean, he he hits all the right notes, right? He's he's a very highly touted Texas quarterback out of high school um, who seems to be very high in the character department, very high in the leadership department. I loved his answers with you yesterday about what he learned from Coach Leach and learned about leadership from Rogers mm-hmm. um, at Mississippi State. I mean, just just really seems to hit all the right beats and has to give you confidence as a Baylor fan, at least, right? I mean, whether you, however you feel about Blake Shapin or the quarterback room or Sean Bell or whatever, has to give you confidence that there's at least going to be talent in that room and depth yeah. in that room. And and you would hope that this means that come next fall, whoever runs out as the starting quarterback has earned it, right? I mean, I mm-hmm. think I think that's ultimately the takeaway that I had from this. Um and I'm just pumped, man. I, I heard Sawyer's name over a week ago um, from some guys as as someone who was going to be on campus, and and that's who I was hoping for this whole time, man. So a huge, huge get for for the Bears. Yeah, to to reveal all of my secrets, as every great magician does. Scotty is my source. Uh, he is kind <laughs> of the, he and his sources are transitive property. My sources, I guess, because when it comes to <laughs> releasing quarterback information at this point. In fact, Scotty's been the one who's on the on the front lines of a lot of this stuff. And you were the first one to, to call me not only about Robertson, but also about Alan Bowman from Texas Tech and then Michigan. And I feel like you and I were in agreement that Bowman would have been a great coach. He would have been a really good <laughs> addition to the coaching staff because yeah. there are programs that bring on your Luke Anthony, who's not going to play, but he's going to bring a, a senior leadership and experience to your quarterback room. And Alan Bowman was likely going to be that for Baylor. I, I think the trade of Bowman for Sawyer Robertson is a really, really good one. If you're a bears fan. And listen, I knew, I knew when he committed to Oklahoma state that we were going to get Sawyer. And, and so I uh, just peek behind the curtain, right? Um, I because I I got called out and I deserved it, Drake. I misappropriated the green light. Um, I put on the green light because I everyone I talked to in the building, Alan Bowman's on campus this weekend. He's a Baylor Bear if he's got a spot. Like it's a done deal. Well, what happened between that message that I got early last week, Monday or Tuesday, and the weekend was Sawyer Robertson into the picture. Yeah. So I think I think from the Baylor perspective, they're thinking just like you and I are thinking. Hey. Bowman might be better than Blake Shapin, might not be, uh, could definitely compete to start. And if not, great veteran presence to have mm-hmm. on the sideline and 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 on the bench. Whereas Sawyer Robertson, you're thinking, if this guy's not the starter this year, which he might be, he certainly is the guy for the future. Certainly someone you can build around. Certainly someone other recruits will get excited to play with. Um, and so when, when Bowman flips to Oklahoma State, that's when I knew, oh, we've we, we've got to be getting Sawyer because he's the only one that would like just make Bowman not an option. I mean, yeah. I mean, so the you're right. As far as like leveling up, um, it was a huge win for the Baylor coaching staff over the weekend because both guys came to campus and you got the better one. 
Yeah, there were quite a few people that came out after the news broke of, okay, Alan Bowman's in the hat and said, hey, he, he's got a shot to be the starter. I, look, I'm not going to blow hot air up anybody's anything. Alan Bowman would not have been the starting quarterback at Baylor. And if he was, I don't think I would have liked that. He, spent, <laughs> he threw 15 passes the last two years. I would rather go with Blake Shapin than Alan Bowman. And now the game changes with Sawyer Robertson. What is it, Scotty, when you look at a kid like Robertson and even the interviews you've heard a film you've watched, what is it that gives him this opportunity to dethrone Blake Shapin? Why is he so good right now, despite not having the numbers this past season of a of even a Blake Shapin who got to start 13 games? Right. Well, and so that's it, right? You, you're going to knock Bowman for, for not throwing a lot of passes these last couple of years. And Sawyer Robertson's not thrown hardly any right. passes at the college Great level, point. right? Right. But but no, but let's be clear, like in, in terms of upside, in terms of recruiting out of high school, in terms of what you look for on high school tape, like Robertson's at another level than Blake Shapin was. Robertson it was, a, it was a guy that a bunch of high caliber programs wanted. And listen, I heard someone say it this way last week, and I think they're right. If you're good enough to play for Mike Leach, you're probably good enough to play for most people. I mean, and Mike Leach had a knack, especially at, at Texas Tech, um, of finding guys that even weren't very highly ranked, yeah. but put the ball in the right place all the time in that air raid offense. Um, Sawyer Robertson is a guy who throws on time. He's a guy who's sound mechanically. Um, and like, this is not a knock on shape and it's just the reality of the question and what you asked. Sawyer Robertson is much more of the prototypical NFL style stand yeah. tall in the pocket and deliver a football quarterback. Um, he's six, four, he doesn't have to roll out to be efficient throwing the football and, and, and Blake shape at times could show that he could throw from the pocket, but he is six foot. Um, he did struggle mechanically, especially as the season went on. Sawyer Robertson is someone um, who, who can stand tall in the pocket and deliver a strike. Um, there's questions because he hasn't thrown a lot of college passes. Um, Baylor fans need to be patient because if he ends up playing for Baylor this coming season, there will be some freshman rust. But he's just got the talent that that big programs want in a pocket quarterback. And um, something really – I don't know that Baylor has seen a guy like Sawyer since Bryce Petty. It's been a, it's been a while. I mean, according to 24-7 Zach, – Zach even, Smith, maybe, but, like, he was on a crappy team. I mean, what – you know. Even – I mean, like, look, 24-7 says that he is the second best quarterback to ever step through the halls of Baylor University when it comes to recruiting-wise. Coming out of high school, he was so highly touted. You have basically taken Austin Novosad and traded him for Austin Novosad with two years of college experience. Instead of, okay, Novosad is going to sit behind Blake Shapin and grow into a role – you don't have to have Sawyer Robertson sit behind anybody or grow into any role. Right. He spent two years as a Mike Leach quarterback. That That's what right. he brings to the table. And look, I, I, Mike Leach, that whole, his legacy in college football, to have spent that much time around that guy as a quarterback, you know you're getting somebody who's just got a different way of looking at football. And that's one of the best parts for me in this. Well, look at what look at what Leach quarterbacks and offensive assistants have gone on to do. Yeah, they all are just brilliant between the ears. I mean, if there was one thing Leach can't tolerate, it's a guy that that can't think when he's on the football field. Um, I heard it. You know, we all probably have heard this quote from an interview where someone says, "You know, Coach Leach, what do you tell your quarterbacks?" And he says, "Throw it to the open guy," and like that's Leach, right? But also, that's yeah. just like. He expects you. You need to know before the snap who's going to be open and get the ball there. He wants cerebral, quick thinking, decision making quarterbacks. And so, yeah, I mean, you're right. Two years under Leach, a guy that's got that kind of intelligence, bodes well for his future at Baylor. Don't think, react. I mean, that's what Leach, that's literally what he said Leach told him was don't right, think, right. react. The last thing that Mike Leach told him before he passed. Mm. And that's what he takes away with the rest of his life. I mean, that that you can't, you can't script it better than that. Put that in the middle of the book. So and good. 
Now he's a Baylor Bear. Scotty, he's not the only one, though. Baylor's got nine transfers in already, and this class is is blown up. Jackson Posey from Inside the Bears tweeted it yesterday. There have been five transfer portal guys in Dave Aranda's career prior to this offseason, and now he's brought in nine already. So the, the culture, uh, the approach to the transfer portal is changing already, and I want to get into that. But first, I want to get into Built Bar. Ah. They only give me one of these built bar reads a week. I wish they gave me way more because it is, I, I can't say this, I'm not allowed to say it, but it might be my favorite one. Built bar right now is how you can be healthy. I'm not saying you're not healthy, but you could probably be healthier because I know I could. And the only way is to get built bar. You don't have to have all the fat and the calories of snacking and eating candy when you do eat candy that is built bar. It's basically candy but it's healthy for you and it's tasty. 100% real chocolate, 100% real milk chocolate. That's right. Churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, all the flavors covered in chocolate, and they're only 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. Every morning I start my day the same way. I drink one bang, a uh, candy apple crisp bang, and I eat a Nature Valley granola bar. That Nature Valley granola bar is supposed to be healthy, right? 240. 40 calories, 240 calories. So I switched over to Built Bar, which has real chocolate, and drained 110 calories off of what I'm consuming every morning for breakfast. And again, 17 grams of protein. Built.com. Go there right now. Get you a box at Built.com. Go to Sam's. They've got it at Sam's. Go to Walmart, which started in Arkansas. Go get it there. Four pack at Walmart of, Walmart of cookies and cream, double chocolate. They got coconut puffs. Or go to Sam's Club. Grab a 13 bar box with brownie batter and churro and thank me later. All of that at Sam's, Walmart, Built.com. That is Built Bar. Scotty, saw you, Robertson. Really good at football. Blake Shapin could end up being really good at football. There's these two quarterback options that I don't think Baylor is uncomfortable with going into next season. But the quarterback room is incomplete. Even if it's going to be a, uh, a Luke type of guy, Luke Anthony type of guy, there's still going to be another guy in the quarterback room next season. Oh, for sure. And I don't know where that guy's going to come from. Um I'm forgetting his first name. Gebbia from Oregon State was also on campus this past weekend. That's a fifth-year, six-year guy that I think is looking to start. So probably with Sawyer coming in, he's off the table, at least in yeah. my mind. Um, Baylor will find one of those guys, and it will be a Luke Anthony-esque. It's probably going to be someone um, from a slightly smaller program. We're just looking for a shot to, to finish a degree, um, you know, master's degree, be on campus at a big-time football program. And they'll find that. I don't think you that is urgent. I, I will tell you, um, and I know we're going to talk about some of these other guys that we've been pulling from the portal. Um, I think what Baylor needs to look for in the remaining time is more help at defensive back. Um, mm -hmm. That was a position group that struggled in times this past season, was already not so deep, and you lost some really, I mean, uh, losing both Walcott and Snacks to Arkansas – it was probably the most painful thing for me in the portal cycle this go round. Um, Cause those were two guys that could make plays for you back there. Um, so I'm interested to see, we've got one corner, but I'm interested to see where else we get help in the secondary, man. Yeah. I, I mean, even just to wrap up the quarterback conversation, cause I don't think Baylor's going to go after a big name in the portal. Um, if you go ahead and look at like, uh, I think Brock Heward's nephew from Washington. Uh, yeah. Mm. Sam Heward is in the portal. He's a four star projected out of high school to be a first round draft pick. Spencer Sanders is still out there. Sadly, Tony Musket from Monmouth, all name team is not on the board anymore, but Hank Bachmeyer from Boise state. There are still some bigger names in the portal at quarterback. I just don't think Baylor is going to even target those guys with the two options they have now. It's going to be somebody who won't get a lot of playing time next year as a Juco kid or a fifth year senior from an ACU or a La Tech that just wants to spend their last year as a coach type, get a master's at a great university like Baylor. But you've already mentioned defensively. I think for me, that's where Baylor's got to continue to build stock out of the portal. You still need two or three more guys to transfer into Baylor this offseason that fit your culture and are a good scheme fit. And I, I think they need to come defensively and maybe even one more offensive lineman. I think I think you're exactly right. Um, and and I think going into the portal, you you see this coaching staff is directly addressing needs 
gaps from this past season in the portal acquisitions, right? So the Barrington brothers coming in to replenish that offensive line that's losing so much. Humongous, like absolute need. And you're right, maybe another guy or two, uh, even just to add depth, would be helpful. Um, you know, Mike Smith, the linebacker, is a guy who could come in. Um, Juco kid who who all he does is tackle. Reminds me a lot of like – um, not physically at all, but just in the way he plays reminds me of Taylor young, just like gets to the ball and tackles people. Um, you added, like, I think a huge one that instantly told you Baylor means business was when you added Keytron Jackson. Um, this guy that, you know, what you were missing last year, your only true number one receiver is the five, eight speed kid. You don't, you know, I, the most frustrating moment of the football season this past year for me was when I was sitting in the berm and Blake shape and tried to throw a like corner, fade in the red zone to Baldwin against TCU and it got yeah. picked off. Of course it did. He's five, eight, right? Keytron Jackson, six, two, uh, number one caliber, um, talent potentially, uh, solves an immediate issue. Dominic Richardson from Oklahoma state. Um, if, if Richard Reese, Tay McWilliams and squirrel are your backs, what are you missing? You're missing a true ground and pounds, guy up the gut dominic richardson can be that so what i see is baylor i mean this coaching staff is addressing the gaps from this past season and so you're right defensively you need secondary help maybe another pass rusher um i think those areas are going to get addressed before this thing's wrapped up quaylen jones tay mcwilliams squirrel and reese four running backs that baylor's got from last year who all had pretty good games and had their streaks aside from Reitz, who was consistent across the board. And now this year, those four running backs all still on campus and you get to add in Dominic Richardson. So you got five guys who could legitimately and, get. And depending on who you talk to, Jordan Jenkins is just waiting to get a couple things right. And Kay and Roberts day is trying to get some off the field grade things, right? And might be the most talented one of all of them. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, the, the talent. So much offensively. And you've got now, Dominic, again, Dominic Richardson, who's added into that, who I, I do. You're right. Ground and pound, more of your Abram Smith. Put your head down. Go get some yardage. You've needed that. You needed that in the offense last year. You could ask that from Richard Reese, but he isn't that style. To me, he's not that style at his base. And and you've got that other running back game. You mentioned about the Barrington brothers. That's huge because Clark was NFL ready. They were like, this guy's going to be, why isn't he going to the draft? No, and they are good. They are really, really good. Freshman All-American and an NFL caliber lineman. Yeah, you're not just filling a stopgap here. These are great offensive linemen. Isaiah Dunson from Miami as well in the secondary you mentioned. They're... <sighs> This is good. This is good. Jack Stone. We forgot about Jack Stone from Michigan State to the kicker. Uh, across the board, transfer portal wise, Baylor has made a change to, and that's all without saying Sawyer Robertson, has made a change to value the portal. And these nine guys, a lot of them who are four star transfers, prove that not only is Baylor going to go to the portal, Dave Aranda is actually pretty good at it. You have to be. You have to be. I mean, I mean, this is the shift, right? This is this is the new mindset we have to enter into in college football. I mean, you've heard most famously probably Deion Sanders talk about it in Colorado, right? Of like he is getting into the portal and getting who he wants to be in his program at Colorado right now, who can play this season. It's changed everything. And so we are full on in the portal era, the NIL era. Um you know, people want to say what they will about both of those things, but it is where we are. And I'm thankful what, what Dave Aranda continues to prove Drake. And this is, there's still questions about Dave Aranda as a program builder long-term, but what he continues to prove is he's flexible and he's not afraid to make quick changes to get things right. And that is something I will always appreciate about him. Yeah. If you look at the right now, 24 seven rankings of teams in the transfer portal, a lot of them come from first year head coaches that naturally Auburn is going to be a team that's up there because you've got so many guys that are transferring out. You're going to have to bring a lot of guys in uh, the number one, number two school, I should say is Colorado. That's no surprise with Deion Sanders. One thing that I look at is a school like Oklahoma state. 
Oklahoma State right now is 13th in the transfer portal recruiting rankings. And duh, no wonder the entire team is transferred out. Obviously, they're going to have an influx of guys coming in and it's going to boost their ranking. Baylor is a top 25. They didn't land a top 25 recruiting class overall, according to most sites after losing Austin Novosad. But when you couple in what they've done with the transfer portal and the number 21 ranked transfer class, Baylor has boosted its stock going into next season when that stock was a big question mark a month ago. Absolutely. And listen, this is this is the plight of being Baylor, right? Um, unfortunately, I don't think it matters how well Baylor plays this next season. Getting consistent five-star talent to Baylor is not how you're going to win at Baylor. No. You have to find other ways to win. And so what Rule and, and some others were so good at is developing like – three-star guys into NFL caliber guys. What Aranda's doing is a combination of that. And hey, like you're saying, if we can get these four-star guys out of the portal that, that didn't quite find their fit at the first place, maybe this is their fit. And you know, um, if there's another thing I trust Aranda to do, it's the fit piece, right? It's that we want Baylor guys, person over player. Um, I don't think he's going to go just get any talented athlete. I think he's going to get someone who can stick, who can fit, and who can play. Um, and that's what I'm seeing in this portal class. Scotty portal is related. So to me is related so closely to NIL. It's like one mm -hmm. of the same at this point, these guys are entering the portal. A lot of them are looking for not only better field on field opportunities, but also money from the NIL deals that they receive. Uh, Baylor starting the new NIL initiative. What? One thing I noticed is they announced the NIL advisory council. I, it's not even political either. Just, it was all older white guys. I noticed um, immediately as well. Yeah. Not really good representation for the female athletes that you have or the minority athletes that you have or athletes of color. Uh, you would think that they would, I mean, I would want someone who looks like me to represent me at, at any opportunity because that's just human nature. And it's not even to be political. I, I wish there was more diversity on the council, but I will, I will concede in that at least there is an NL, NIL advisory council at this point. That's a step that I, I think a lot of Baylor fans were calling for recently, myself included. And finally, not only is there an emphasis on the transfer portal, Baylor has caught up to 2023 and is putting emphasis on NIL. Yeah, you're right. And, I, and you know, I was explaining this to uh, my wife the other day, asking some questions about NIL. And I kind of like I just said, we're not going to get the five-star kids, but you, you can develop three stars and four stars. I think what, what Baylor has to figure out how to do, and I agree with everything you said about diversity representation so i i don't want to just belabor that point i agree with you um what baylor has to do i think to be successful is make sure every kid on that roster is getting some money yeah because i think the difference for those for those four stars or those high three star kids is going to be none of those kids are are getting the the six figure deals right um i laughed my, i'm friends with reuben owens who was the number one running back out of this last class he was in my youth group in el campo and uh, people asked him in an interview last week, is, is Texas A&M paying you $2 million, $3 million? And he laughed and said, no, <laughs> like maybe a, maybe 100 to 200 K. Like that's kind of what we're looking at, right? And he was the number one running back in America in this class. So for Baylor, you're not going to, you're not going to be paying kids six figures. Yeah. But can you look at, can you look at a high rated three star, a four star and say, this is how much because of this council's work or because of Baylor's like commitment, this is how much every player on this roster can make. Yeah. This is like, you don't even have to meet a performance standard. You don't even have to sign the, this deal or that deal just because you're, you, if you commit to Baylor, this is what you can make, even though you aren't the five-star player. I think if they can find some way to do that hmm. and make sure everybody's paid and everybody has some value, I think that lends itself to building a good culture. I think that lends itself to getting other guys in that might be between a couple of uh, places similar to Baylor, right? Uh, smaller schools, private schools. Um, I, I think there could be real success here. And there has to be. There has to. You have to adapt 100%. to be successful. Yeah. 100%. The, it is. I had nothing to do with this. Baylor fans in general probably had nothing to do with this. They Baylor hears backlash all the time for certain issues. And I, I do think it truly was a coincidence that we had just released like three shows on NIL and is Baylor <laughs> cool. And then within, within 72 hours, Baylor announces this new NIL advisory council. I think it had nothing to do with that. Just complete chance timing, but it's so good to see there are glaring issues with Baylor not being ahead of the times with the times 
And then when those issues are recognized, there becomes a breaking point of, okay, we can merge culture and person over player with NIL and with being a new age college athletics program. And it just feels good that Baylor, who is not necessarily known for its ad- adapting and evolving, is adapting and evolving in this. Wait, tech, a, a church affiliated with Texas Baptist, are, is be, it known for adapting and evolving? That's you crazy. would have no idea. You, you especially as a pastor, <laughs> would have zero idea. As, that's why. as a pastor who served on the Texas Baptist task force to reach young adults, dude. Yes. Listen, I'm with you. I'm with you. Hey, but here's what I'll say, Drake, man. Listen. Um more than ever in Baylor's history. And I, and I've been going to Baylor games since I was born. Um, I like to joke that I was forged in the Kevin Steele and Guy Morris eras. Cause that's when I came up loving Baylor as a kid, right? More than ever. I'm confident in who Baylor has in positions of leadership. Yeah. I'm confident. Linda Livingstone is the best president in Baylor history. Mac Rhodes is indisputably the best athletic director in Baylor history. Um, Dave Aranda might be when it is all said and done, the best football coach in Baylor's history. I mean, I'm so confident in the leadership uh, at this time at Baylor. Um, they'll figure it out. They're a little behind where you and I would want them to be, especially mm-hmm. with game atmosphere and some of those things we've talked about. Um, there go my lights, but they'll figure it out, man. I will, out. So, <laughs> will say Linda does not have a lot of competition there. There's not nope. a lot. Like- of <laughs> When you really, if we're going to take out the the people that own slaves or the racists or the one that were just really bad people, she's down to a tight list, but she still wins that list. Uh, And Mac Rhodes (laughs) in a similar category. But you're right. right? Baylor has taken at least those steps to have that kind of leadership who has brought them to, to, who's continued to foster them at the forefront of athletics. So, listen, I didn't have a sermon today. So let me use a pastoral analogy that I've heard many times. Churches churches take on the personality of their pastor. Um, When I became a youth pastor and I saw some kids leaving and some kids coming and I'd get all stressed out about the kids that were leaving, my youth pastor called me and said, Scotty, your youth group is going to take on your personality and the kids who are attracted to that and want that and need that are going to be part of your group. It's going to take on, that's part of it. The university, the football program, the athletics department. If you trust who's in leadership, who's in that top role, It's going to take their personality, their ethics, their priorities. Um, It's going to work itself out, man. And I, and I trust Mac Rhodes and I trust Linda Livingstone more, more than anything. I mean, I trust those people. Hmm. Well, Scotty, before we get you out of here, um, the transfer portal, just kind of go back to that. Any, any other crazy visits or anything that you want to (laughs) divulge into here real quick? No other crazy visits, but I, I told you this off the air, and I'll, I'll say it uh, just because I think it's funny, right? And it brings us back to the pigskin preacher like moniker. Um, you know, I I had heard from a contact at Baylor um, last Tuesday or Wednesday that Sawyer Robertson was coming to campus, was a very possible commit. I texted you that we'd put that out in some places, um, but uh, the. Was it Wednesday that he committed? Or was it Tuesday? I'm already getting my movie. Tuesday? I think it was up. Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Tuesday, Early Tuesday morning, I, I had a pastor call me and say, I, I spoke with um, Sawyer's aunt and uncle who go to this church, and I spoke with Sawyer's pastor who's at this church in Lubbock, and he feels like God is calling him to Baylor, and so he's going to be at Baylor. And sure enough, that that afternoon he committed, and then in an interview says, "I felt like God was calling me to Baylor." So the you're, the Texas Baptist Network of Preachers, man, so that's the connection. It's a real thing. Uh, I love it. <laughs> so that's no, I, but I have no, I have no scoop on anyone else. Uh, let's hope we get some DBs in there. Yeah. Man. Start calling youth pastors that coach that are yeah yeah youth pastors find of, the, find the DBs in the portal and start of calling. DBs. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I love it. (laughs) That is Scotty Swingler at Preacher Pigskin on Twitter. Drake Toll here from Sports Illustrated's Inside the Bears. Come back Monday. We'll break down this weekend's basketball game for the Bears. And we'll talk about Sawyer Robertson more out of the transfer portal, as I'm sure news will, more news will have happened by then. All of that and more on Monday's edition of Locked On. That's what this has been. And thank you for making it your first listen every single day. Baylor.